can all see it tonight. I'll move this a little back a little bit. Amen. Hey, can you guys hear me out tonight? Amen. Amen. Hey, man, it's good to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. I'm used to all this. It's good. Hey, Amen. The sound people, when we do the sound, amen, you see all that. You all make sure you turn the monitors down. Make sure you do that so we don't hear no echo and all that. Amen. So, hey, amen. It's good to be here tonight. Amen. With the people of God in the house of God. Amen. Let's go. Amen. It's always good, amen, to be in the house of God, amen. Like I said, man, no other place I'd rather be is but to be in the house of God tonight, amen, with God's people, amen. Uh, it's been my life, amen, since I was 13 years old, amen. This has been my life. Um, I know that there ain't no other life for me, amen. Um, whoo, I'm about to cry right now. Uh, but, amen, I, I'm really grateful tonight, amen, to be in the house of God, amen, to... Man, be saved, you know, serving God, amen, and our lives, we could be somewhere else, man, we could be tore up, you know what I mean? I remember my mom and dad, our lives all just jacked up and everything, amen, and just coming to God tonight, amen, serving God, what a privilege and an honor to be here that God found me. I remember being so brokenhearted as a child, being so angry at the world when my mom passed away. There's so much in my life taking place, you know, but tonight that God, man, that I'm here tonight, amen, in the house of God with God's people, amen, and just... To be with you guys tonight, I mean, I crown it a great privilege and an honor, amen. Um, tonight, amen, um, uh, I entitled this sermon, amen, uh, Pastor Tim gave us an outline, amen, what he has to, uh, for us to teach, amen, and I, I find it a great privilege and an honor, amen, because our pastor, amen, you know, if you just see what our pastor is, uh, his vision that he's seen right now, amen, things that are taking place, the sermons that he's been preaching about, amen, preaching about our life, about pride, about lust, about all adultery, about fornication, about, man, not doing the will of God, preaching of all these things, amen, and that, that God is just instilling to our pastor, showing them, taking them to a place where, where we need to be as a people of God, you know what I mean, thank God for our leaders and our pastors, and I've just been watching Pastor Sim just hearing his sermons, what he's been talking about, amen, getting us ready, amen, being prepared as a church, as a family, that we don't just people that we just show up here and then we go home and we forget about everything else, but man, this is our life, this is what we do, this is who we are, this is what we do, serving God, living for God, amen, tonight, and tonight, amen, I entitled this sermon, amen, um, God's love for the church, amen, God's love for the church, amen, is you and I, amen, gotta squeeze this, amen, but God's love for the church, I mean, tonight I entitled that sermon, God's love for the church tonight, I mean, if you listen to that, I mean, how much God loves his church, how much he gave his life for the church, I mean, how Jesus said, you know what I mean, when there was people here on earth, I mean, the Pharisees and all these ways, when Jesus came down to earth, I mean, he began to say, man, you guys ain't doing the right way, you ain't showing people how my church is supposed to be, so God says, you know what, I'm going to send my son down, and he's going to show you the way the church is supposed to be, the Bible says he used to get in conflict with the Pharisees and all these other things, amen, I'm going to tie myself, amen, um, you know, but man, how he had so much conflict with Pharisees, amen, but he came to set the right way, the standard of serving God, living for God. You can bring him on. Oh, uh, thanks. I told my brother to give me water. <laughs> You know what I mean? But it's just an honor, amen, just to see what Jesus has done for us, amen, as a people of God, amen, as he, God has sent his son down for us to have a church, amen, a place of refuge, and, and, and we have to know as a people of God, this is a sanctuary. This is, the sanctuary was a place where God says, I'm going to show my presence. This is where my presence will begin to be established. The spirit of God will begin to fall in this place. When you walk into this place, you're going to feel the presence of God. That's why when you come into the house of God, you're in sin you're doing things wrong, you're going to be offended, you're going to be mad, you're going to get mad because the Spirit of God is here. The evil can't dwell here. When the Spirit of God is here, when the presence of God is here, evil will not reign here because this is the presence of God. People come here. People contend for the presence. People are asking God, pour out your Spirit in our church, God. Do something new, God. When people walk through these doors, God, whether they haven't prayed all day, God, when they come in, God, that they will be filled with the Spirit of God. They will be touched, God. They will feel that. 
There's so many people that come into the house of God, amen, that are hurt, that are confused, that are jacked up, messed up. But there are those people that are here praying, God, man, visit our people, God, touch our people. There's so many people that are hurting. And in the day and age we live in, there is a spirit that is going around that tells us, man, we don't have to go to church. We, you don't need to go to church. You don't have to be faithful. You don't have to do that. Oh, you don't have to be that committed. That's an ugly, wicked spirit that is going around in our generation, in our churches right now. People are saying that you don't need to be the church. The Bible says that God's spirit is not always going to tarry with men. It's not always going to be here. God says my spirit is not always going to be here. I made the church for one reason and one purpose was to bring glory to me, to see many mankind saved for the glory and the honor of God. But God is saying tonight, my spirit is not always going to be here. When the world, when people, when you and I, I say you and I because this sermon, amen, is not something easy to take in, amen. It's for my life too, amen, that God is going to judge our church one day. The Bible says that that the judgment of God starts in the house of God. God says, when I come back one day, I'm going to judge my church. Why? Because my church knew better. They knew why. Our unfaithfulness, everything in our lives that we do, and then we think, oh, man, I don't need to go to church today. You know, there was many times in my life, amen, where I was unfaithful, where I wasn't committed, where I was like, man, you know what I mean? I don't need to go to church. I don't need to do that. You know what I mean? But, man, we're called to be faithful because people are watching you. People are looking. Pastor Tim was always saying that people are watching you. When you think people aren't looking at you, they're looking at you. They're watching you, you know. Amen? amen. How many know people are watching us? People look Look at it, whether you can see it or not. Amen. But if, um, if you have your Bibles in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says like this. It says, let us not give up in meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. You know, right here, let me read it one more time. It says, let us not give up in meeting together, as are in the, in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. The Bible says, for us not to neglect the house of God, not us to, man, take it lightly. When people are taking the house of God lightly, that we will take it seriously. Say, man, no, I need to be in church. Yeah. There's times my kids say, Dad, why do we got to go to church? <laughs> say, son, if we don't go to church, daughter, if we don't go to church, well, man, me and mom will not be together. When me and mom came together, it was because of God. You take God out of our life, we won't be together. My wife didn't even like me when we came to God. She didn't even care about me. Like, I was going to take her. She always tells me I love her. I said, no, I love you first because I came after you first. I, I looked at you first. I went after you first. But my wife didn't even like me, you know, but just to say, God put us together. God God put our marriage together. And if I take God, say, God, you, you, you know, I don't need you right now in my marriage. Man, God says, well, what I put together, I will take from you. Yeah. Your love your wife has for you is only because of me. You take God out of our lives. We don't have husbands. That's why when you see people serving God and they leave God, what happens? The automatically, they break up. They start fighting. They go away. They're doing drugs. He's sleeping with her. He's sleeping with that. Cry with him because now he's a friend, you know, but there's all kinds of wickedness running rapid in, in, in society, in our world, in our churches, amen, and it's trying to creep into the church of God, amen, but as a people of God, we have to stand and say, no, I'm serving God, I ain't going to work, God, I'm living for you, God. Before I go any further, amen, let's just pray tonight, amen. <laughs> Father God, we come before you tonight, God. We just thank you, God, that we're able to be in your house, God. We just give you all the glory tonight, God. I just pray that I would decrease tonight, God, that you would increase, God. I pray that I would minister to your people, God, with your word, God. You said your word will not return back to you void, God. And I pray that, man, people will be encouraged tonight, God, that we will grab a hold of your word tonight, God, that you are serious, God, that you're coming back for a church, God, that is ready, God, for you, God. And I just pray that you touch all your people tonight, God, and every life, whether old, young, or, or young, very young, or infants tonight, God, minister to all all our lives tonight and all God's people say amen and amen. But amen, that's what I want to, to talk about tonight, amen, is the church of God, how vital our church is, amen, how important the church of God is, amen, how important is it that you come to church, amen, that we don't take it lightly and say, well, I ain't going to church today, amen. Uh, don't get me wrong, if you're sick, there's other things, medical things, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about our heart, our heart, where is our heart at, man? If we ain't in the house of God, that's where we lose faith, that's where we lose fire. When you ain't in the presence of God, when you ain't with your brothers and sisters, man, you begin to get crazy. The Bible says, where there is no God, the people are confused. 
man, when we're left alone, we're tripping, we're thinking crazy, you know what I mean? Man, I hate the pastor, I hate the people, I hate that, because you're left alone. You ain't, you ain't where you're supposed to be at. Where you're supposed to be at is in the house of God, not at your house, not at your thoughts, not at the movies, amen. You have a call to be in the house of God tonight, amen? Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, amen. God looks at us. As a church, amen, as a couple, as a marriage, as, as, as a married couple, amen, he looks at us as that, as, as faithful, as, as being committed to one another. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ has loved the church and gave himself up for her. God is saying that husbands, love your wives just as I. God says, just as you do that for your, your, your wife, God says, that's how I love the church. God loves his church. He gave himself for it. He said, I died for the church. I gave everything that I had. I left heaven. He left his royalty. He left his place of righteousness to come down to, to man, give us a hope, to give us a life. When sin entered the world, somebody had to pay the price for sin. Somebody had to pay the price. That's why Jesus came on the cross to die. I was sharing that with my son. I told him, son, man, there's so many religions out here today and then the, the things that are people are believing you know what I mean but man there's people that said they seen a, that, their, that they, their religion occurred by a vision or something they seen a, a prophet spoke to them or something some way they say but Christianity Jesus is the one that died for the sins he's the one that came and paid the ultimate price for sin that we can have access to heaven there ain't no other religion there ain't ever no other thing that says man that they died somebody has to pay for your sins somebody has to pay and that was Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why we're here today. That's why we're saved. That's why we have access to heaven tonight. Amen? Amen. 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 But that's how God is looking at. Amen. I, I, uh, I put, uh, it's, uh, it's my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law up there tonight. Amen. I put a picture of them, uh, of their marriage. Amen. Of them being together. Amen. Because, man, Throughout years, amen, you see a couple, they go through things, amen, they, they, they go through battles in their marriage and their lives, you know what I mean, and we all have battles in our marriages, we go through things in our lives, and we're struggling, fighting, amen, but we're trying to fight each other, you know what I mean, it's like a marriage, I remember when me and my wife got married, it was an ugly thing, we went through a whole lot of stuff, we fought, I argued, I was a crazy, demonic, evil person, I was bad, you know what I mean, but... We had to find each other. We had to become one. And that's what you do when you come into the house of God. You become one. God began to take all that ugliness out of you, all those attitudes out of you, all the bitterness out of you, all the jealousy out of you. God's trying to get all that stuff out of you because when you come to God, God looks at you as a rock. But when, when you're in the house of God and when God is done with you, you become a masterpiece in God's house, in the house of God. God is chipping at your life. God is breaking you. God is not walking in your life. You don't need that. You need to get rid of that. You need to throw that away. And that's why we enter the house of God because things begin to happen. There's people that come in here broken. There's some people that come in here excited. There's people that come in here with joy. There's some people come in here that want to commit suicide. There's probably somebody here tonight that wants to commit suicide. There's somebody that says, man, if this doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm done with my life. Amen. But there's so many lives as we come into the house of God. We have to have a heart that, man, cares for people, that loves people. Amen. Amen. And then in Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, it says like this. It says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make your joy com complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and the purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but, be, but in humility, considering others than yourselves. It says each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be as the same as that of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, amen, right here it's saying, if you have entered into the house of God, this scripture is talking about, if you have entered into the house of God, you have been encouraged, you have been loved, you have been spent time with, you have been, man, encouraged, lifted up, prayed for, how, man, spoken to. I know that our pastor spends a lot of time with his people encouraging our church. It says, the Bible says, if you have got any of those things in your life, the Bible says you're supposed to pass it on to somebody. You're supposed to pass that baton of love to somebody. If you see somebody hurting, whether even if you have money, Money. You have money to bless somebody. You have finances to help somebody. To man, bless them and pay their bill. The Bible says to give. Give to them. If that's what they need. If they need prayer, the Bible says to give to them prayer. If they need man healing, pray for healing for them. 
everything that we have been taught in the house of God, it is for hard times in your life when you go through things in your life to begin to use that. Man, I remember Pastor Tim talked about prayer. I need to use prayer. I remember talking about Pastor Tim talking about fighting. I need to fight the good fight of faith. I need to hold faith, man, the race that is set before me. Those things you got to begin to pull out, things that you have been taught. When you walk into the house of God, this is not for nothing. We don't just come in here just to waste our time. I certainly don't. I said, God, if you're here, I don't want to be here, God. But if you're here, God, I want to be here because that's when things begin to take place in our lives. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm just speaking about faithfulness. Amen. That's what God is looking at tonight is faithful men. God is looking for faithful women, faithful teenagers. For the teenagers that don't think they need to be used by God, man, God wants to use your life. God wants to change your life. God wants to use you to help other teenagers. I remember um, serving God at 13, man, being a teenager at, at Thomas Jefferson. I remember going to school, you know, reading my Bible. Man, by myself, man, nobody, I, I never really hung around with people, amen, because they were crazy, smoking weed, being with guys, girls, kissing, doing all kinds of stuff. But I took a stand because I wanted to serve God. I knew what the world was. I seen it through my mom and dad's life. Amen. And that's what you are tonight, teenager. You may think, well, I, don't, I ain't nobody. I ain't, man, I can't help nobody. I can't encourage you. Who am I? I'm just a young person. God can do great things in a young person's life. It's through that young person that you begin to get maturity in your life. You can begin to be bold when you're at school and say, no, I don't do that. No, I don't talk like that. There's people at work, they be talking crazy. They say, I'm a Christian. I serve God. And they're blip this and blip that. You know what I mean? But they have no kind of, man, God inside said, that's not the God that I serve. And God wants to show, we need to lift up Jesus' name. We need to stand for God. We need to be a, a man an example to people. People are looking for examples in our life. Amen? In James chapter 2 verse 26 it says as the body is it says as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also. Amen. The Bible is saying that amen that Faith without works is dead, amen. There's a lot of people, amen, in the world, amen. They say, I love God. Everybody says, I love God. Man, I'm a Christian. I do that. But the Bible says, faith without works is dead. Man, God wants to use, change your faith to doing works. Ministry. There's so many ministries in the house of God that, man, need help, amen. I know that, man. Man, I know the nursery workers would love to have 20, 20 women of nursery workers ready to serve, ready to, man, work in the, minute, in the nursery. They're like, you got to be like, oh, shoot, I was starting to like you. No, I don't like you no more, man. But God is looking for women. God is looking for men that, man, will say, man, I'll take the challenge. I'll work in the nursery. I'll be the, I'll, I'll love those kids. I'll work with them. Man, I know Brother Art's looking for more ushers, man. Pastor's looking for more preachers. Man, no, people that care for people. People that will spend time with people. There are so many ministries in our church that are lacking. But because of people we don't get up, man, things are not going to happen. Our church will stay the same way that it is unless people say, I'll help. What can I do? If I got to come to the church and sweep, I'll sweep. I don't have to have a title to do something for God. God is looking for every man and woman to be available in the kingdom of God. Not just to receive, but say, man, I've received and I've alert. I've paid attention. I know what's going on here. What can I do tonight? Amen. That's what God is looking tonight. He's looking for faithful men. Faithful women. He says, man, can I find a faithful one? Just somebody that will say I'm available. That's all you got to be is available. And God will do the rest. I remember getting my Class A license. And I, I, it was very hard for me. It was very, man, just my mind. Everything that was going through my, my life. And I was like telling my wife, I don't think I can do this. You got to memorize too many parts of the truck, semis. You got to name all these parts. You have to know the semi. You have to double clutch. I said, I never even drove a stick truck, and I'm learning how to drive a semi. You know, my wife, she told me one thing that really stuck out to me. She says, Roy, you do what you can, and God will do what you can. And tonight, amen, you do. By you coming into the house of God, God, God will do what you can. When you need to step out of the house, amen. When you begin to give up yourself, amen, God will be the increase. God will be that faithful to you because you're being faithful to his kingdom. The Bible says, man, there, there is so many work. There's, the, the Bible says that, man, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. There's very few that say, man, I'll, I'll help, I'll work, you know what I mean? But there's a lot of us tonight, amen. If imagine this whole church, amen, was in the, in the ministry, you know how influential our church would be, the next level that our church would rise to, amen, that the things that God could do in the life, whether you're young here, to, young here tonight, whether you're old here tonight, man, God could do great things in our lives if we begin to open our lives to Him, right? Amen. I need some water. 
I need that backpack. <laughs> Some of you guys remember that. In Matthew 9, 37, it, it talks about laborers. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, it says that, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the, the workers are few. He says, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Man, God is looking tonight our pastor's hearts. Pastor Tim, Sister Mary, their hands, hearts, amen, their hearts are to people that will rise up to have a desire. Our pastor's in Santiago, Chile tonight, amen, because he has a heart for people. He has a burden for souls. He has a burden for people's lives, amen, to be saved, amen. He had to go all the way to Santiago, Chile, amen, to encourage a church, amen, to minister to a church, amen. And that is us tonight, amen, that we would take that role, amen. I always think about, man, God, what if you took our elders of our church? What if our elders weren't here? Would our young people, would we be able to make our church run? What if God took Sister D? What if God took Mr. Walls? I'm not taking them, taking them to heaven. What if they just weren't here? What if he took Mrs. Walls, Sister Dolores, you know, all our elderly people, you know? And what, what would we do as a church? Would we begin to get up and say, hey, I've been taught long enough. I'll be able to run this. I can do that ministry. I can have out here. That's, what God, that's a very scary thing. You know, I always think about our pastors. You know, if our pastors, God forbid, you know, God take our pastors to another city or to another place to preach, amen. What is everything that we have been instilled through all these years? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go as a church? God is looking for faithful people that will say, God, I ain't going to leave the church because Pastor Tim is just around leaving to do another work somewhere else. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to be taught what my pastor showed me what my pastor showed me to do. That I will stand in the gap. That I will be faithful. That I will build this church. Amen. Because everything we do is for God tonight. Amen. But there is, man, such a great need for laborers. Amen. Even I, I don't stand up here and say that I'm faithful enough or I've, uh, I've uh, accomplished great things or I've made it. I haven't made it. Until we get to heaven, then we made it. I say tonight, Brother Robert made it because, amen, he was faithful to the end. Amen. He was committed to the end. Amen. His life speaks volumes to me tonight. Amen. And that is a life that, man, I, that inspires my life today, man, that we as a church need to be that, man, God, I'm going to serve you, God, no matter what. When people come in and say, man, oh, you don't got to go to church. You don't got to be faithful. Man, God says, don't neglect it. Don't, man, when people are telling you, oh, you don't got to be church. You don't got to be committed. You don't always have to be there. Why you always got to be there? If I ain't here, where am I going to go? If I leave the church and go slam dope with you, go smoke crystal meth, go drink a 40 with you, and what then? Where do we go? When I smoke the weed, when I smoke the joint, when I've done that, when I slam the heroin, where do you take me? Where do you lead me? That's what we need to know as the people of God. I always think of people that, man, follow other people. They fall into sin and they, and they walk away from God. You should tell that person, and if I follow you, where do we go from here? Where do we go? Is there some other place that you're going to give me hope? Is there something that you're going to give me love, fulfillment in my life if I walk away from you? That girl had been tonight that may be telling you, man, come on, let's just go. Let's leave the church. We don't need to be mad. We don't need to listen to the pastors. We don't need to listen to Sister Marianne. What if that brother tells you, man, sister, let's go, man. We don't need this church, man. We'll go to another church. No, he just wants to mess you over. He just wants to do you wrong. But you got to stay faithful. You say, no, I ain't going with you, bro brother Wolfie or Sister Cleveland. You didn't tell her, I ain't going with you. There is a real devil that wants to send you. He'll dress up, put a skirt on, whatever you got to do to get your attention. He will get your attention to get you out of the house of God. Satan will fight you at the worst. He will fight you, man, when, when, you're, when you're doing good, when you're doing bad. He will attack your life until you give in. But I'm telling you tonight, fight, man. Continue to be a part of the body of Christ. Continue to be a part of the church. I want to have the burdens of my pastor. I, I want to help do ministry. There's a lot of the ministries that I could probably be doing, you know. But I want to help. I want to be a partaker, not to be lifted up. But we can all do something in the kingdom of God. Tonight, it's so vital that we participate, that we don't just say, man, I just want to be in the sanctuary and just receive. That. Man, I want to be an usher. The ones that it's outside, the nursery worker that's in the nursery that's probably been in there three times in a row, you know what I mean? Those people, man, we want to begin to help them, relieve them of their duty, amen, so they can come and receive the word of God. Relieve the next usher, relieve the next Bible study, relieve the next preacher. You know, that's what God gives you tonight, amen? Amen. In Philippians chapter 2, 
Verse 12 and 16, it says, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining, disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless. Children of God, without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shall shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I, that I may have not run in vain or labored in vain. Right here, the Bible is talking about, man, everything that you have been taught, amen, don't do it without murmuring and complaining. Amen, there, it, it's, a, it, it's easy, so easy to get it caught up in. Well, why don't he do it? Why don't they do it? Man, I know so much about being unfaithful. I remember being unfaithful. What is the worst thing that the devil does to a marriage when they get in an argument and a fight? What are the first words they say? I ain't going to church. I ain't going to church. That's like the worst thing you could do to your spouse. That's the worst thing you could do to your husband. That's the worst thing you could do to your wife. I remember getting in an argument with my, with my wife before we go to church, and I'm telling her, I ain't going to church. You go to church without me. I ain't going to that. I'm not going. And it was like a knife just stabbed right in her heart. You know what I mean? Because it was, I'm a part of her, and it was like a part of her dead. And she was like, man, she would go to church, have to discourage people. How are you doing, sister? So I'm doing good, I'm doing good. But inside she was wounded. I heard her because the devil knows how to attack you. The, the enemy knows how to assault you. Whether you're married or not, the devil will get you some way to you in your life through trials and tribulations that will offend you, that will attack you, to get you out of the house of God and say, I ain't going to church. That's the main thing. When people fight, I ain't going to church. Go to church without me. I, I don't need to be there. It begins to disconnect because the enemy knows if you have faithful people in the church, you're going to have a faithful church. You're going to have a great church, a mighty church. You have faithful people in the house of God. You have people that ain't committed. You have people that ain't faithful. You're going to have a weak church. You're going to have weak people. You're going to have weak leaders because there ain't people that are committed. There ain't nobody showing, hey, so-and-so, this is how you do it. Hey, brother, you don't talk like that. I always think of Dog the Bounty Hunter. You ever see Dog the Bounty Hunter? He's like... Blank, blank, beep, beep, blank, beep. I'm, I'm saying cuss words right now, you know. <laughs> he, he's on there uh, doing the bus and stuff, and he's like, you punk took my money. Beep, blank, beep, beep. He cussed this dude out, ripped his whole life apart. Then he gets in the truck and gives him a series like, bro, you know God has a plan for you? God has a plan for you. He's like, bro, let me pray for you. God loves you, bro. Why are you out here doing this, bro? I'm like, damn. Cuss this dude out, jacked his whole life up. He don't even know who he is. Yeah, after all the cuss words, he heard that he robbed and stole his money from him. But we don't want to be a dog, the bounty hunter. We want to be a Christian that a man of God that takes his life on track. Amen. The Bible says it in John.